right, welcome back to part two of our Celtic knot, um, circular knot tutorial. Um, hopefully I didn't overwhelm you too much with part one. There was you know, it's a lot of technical kind of stuff going on there. Um, but if you missed that one, please watch that one before you try to do this one because this will not make sense to you until you get your grid set up. So if you didn't watch part one, the link will be in the um, comments or the description. And please click on that and watch that first because you have to set up the grid first. And this is what we did in that tutorial. This is kind of where I left off. I was showing everybody how we found the, um, how we were able to, to use geometry to divide up the circle into 32 sections to create this grid. And I went and I, I redrew it because it was, you know, after, because I had to put my lines in dark for you. Uh, when I started erasing my lines, it was a mess. So I went and redrew drew it to give you a clean um, grid to look at. And today we're going to do the, f the more fun stuff. We're going to um, start setting up the, um, the actual knot itself. And it's going to look, in the end, something like that. Or however you decide to style it, but this is what I'm talking about when, I'm, when I say a circular Celtic knot. Okay? So it's going to kind of look like that. All right, now, in, the, in other tutorials, when we did the straight uh, tutorial knots, let me see if I can find one to show you. We did, we, we basically uh, drew parallel lines perpendicular to each other to get the overs and unders, and then we drew in um, the loops around them and, and all that stuff. Well, I'm gonna do something a little different this time. So if you were watching those, this is gonna be a little different, and it might, maybe this is a different technique that you might, you might like. We're gonna do what's, we're gonna draw um, what's called a spine, and this actually works better if you actually know for sure what, you know, we have a really good feel for what the, the final design is going to look like. Um, I'm going to draw a spine, and we are going to start, we'll start here. It doesn't really matter where you start, but we'll start at the top since that's simpler. I'm going to draw a loop like that, okay? And you're going to do that same loop all the way around. It's going to span two sections and sort of try to make them look about the same. It doesn't have to be perfect because these are just guidelines and don't draw them dark because they're guidelines. They're going to be erased. And all you're doing is just going around the circle I'm making these loops. that span two sections. Oops, well, that's all right. We'll fix that later. Okay, now those are the top, there's going to be the top of the knot, right? We need the bottom, so these are going to be the spine for the top of the knot. Now we need the bottom of the knot, and if you take a look, it's like a pretzel shape. The bottom loop is not going to be right underneath, it's going to be in between. Okay, so if that makes any sense, here's two of the top loops. Your bottom loop is going to be in between 
like that. So you're almost making a smiley face if you, you know, maybe a couple eyes and a smiley face. I don't know. Then we're going to do that all the way around. And don't worry if it's not perfect. Everything will be fixed in the end. These are just guidelines. All right, now we have our top loops, we have our bottom loops. These loops need to be connected because this is a thread, remember. This represents a thread, and threads are going to be winding. So if we start here and we follow this thread, it's going to wind here. So you're going to connect it. Okay? And you can either continue doing it like that. Or you can decide to trace you know, follow one thread if it helps you do it that way instead. You're basically just taking the diagonally crossed, the square in between, the squares in between, right? But I find it's easier just to go in one direction. And then just go back and go in the other direction. And that way you're not, you, you know, you don't miss anything too. You don't get confused. But you do you, you do whatever you think is most comfortable. And then you would go back and of course do the other, connect it in the other direction. And what you should end up with is, is like a pretzel shape. All right, I think I got everything. Got a little carried away there, okay. All right, so this is the spine. It basically represents this, but it represents a center line inside of this. That's why I'm calling it a spine. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to draw the lines, the actual lines of the thread. So the line on this side of the spine and the line on this side of the spine. Get it? Parallel lines. Okay. So let's see if we can do that here. We'll start here. And we're not going to worry about intersections right now. We're just going to leave them. You're going to draw the line above it and the line below it. Okay, when you get to the intersections, just don't meet the intersection yet, just leave it. All you're doing is that. Line above, line below, and even these lines that you're drawing now don't have to be perfect because they are just the beginning of your design and you'll go over them again at least once. So you'll have an opportunity to fix any mistakes that you make. Anything that's wonky, you'll be able to fix it. So don't, don't sweat this too much, just have fun with it. Keep it loose. If it looks like garbage, it's fine. It will until you get to the end. like I lost something here. Yeah, I didn't connect that. <laughs> I knew there was something wrong there. <sighs> so 
you're basically just doing this all the way around and we will take care of these intersections once we get all the way around and get everything, all the lines drawn. And you know, don't spend, don't get too sloppy with this, but try and keep your lines roughly the same. But don't, don't overthink it, but don't get too sloppy with it either. Find a nice balance. And these lines could potentially be erased too, so if they're not right, it's fine. Oh, that wasn't a very good line, was it? You're still in the building phase, in other words. That's what I'm saying with this one. This is still the building phase. Just pay attention. I know there's a lot of lines, so you're going to have to really pay attention to what you're doing, where you're at. This is good for meditation because you have to focus. So if I stop chatting and I'm quiet for a couple minutes, it's because I'm trying not to screw it up. <laughs> Really gotta keep your eye on it. Like I said, most of these lines are guidelines. They will be erased. And hopefully you're, you're listening to me when I tell you, do not draw them dark. As you will not get rid of the, the pencil marks and you'll have to retrace your design, unless that's your intention. If that's your intention, then go as dark as you like. Oh, I don't do that. Okay, I think we're right back where we started. Yes, we are. All right. We are back where we started. Now we have our outline. We don't need the spine anymore. We're gonna go in and erase the spine. And I'm just gonna go through it and just follow because it's just gonna be quicker, I think, for me to just follow. Follow the thread. That way I can just keep my eraser going. I don't have to, don't worry about Erasing other stuff, that's fine. Even if you erase the lines we just drew, that's fine. You know where they are. You know where they're going. That's all you need right now. I love these um, click erasers for this particular reason because I can go in and do a small space without erasing too many lines. You can erase this any way you want. If you want to just do sections, that's fine. But like I said, I feel like this is going to be quicker if I do it this way. Because I'm just tracing a line. And I know where I'm going, so... I think uh, go around one, one or two more times, maybe one time, two times.
I feel like this is the reason why I did this this way instead of the way that I had shown you before with the um, doing the overs and unders first and then working the knot around that. I feel like with these round knots that this is a much easier way um, to, to construct them. It, it just feels so much easier to me and less confusing and um, the knot feels like it, sh it, it ends up looking a lot nicer. All right, so what we have, I'm gonna go in now this time and get a slightly darker I was working with 2H, I think I'll try to an HB, just because I want to go in slightly darker now. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to go in and we're going to start putting in the permanent, semi-permanent semi lines with the overs and unders. So that's your first loop, all right? It's arbitrary, I just picked a place to start. I needed a loop that was crossing through an intersection and it's gonna go over just because that's where I started. This thread that goes this way is gonna go under, but we'll deal with that later. All I'm gonna do with this one is just follow it here. And I'm basically just drawing over the parallel lines I just drew. Okay? And you're seeing a pattern. You're seeing the pattern that it's making. Okay? Now, you can do this all the way around if you want. Do it this way. This is one way you could do it. Um, if you wanted to just work in sections, that's fine too. You're just going to go through and make sure that they're lined up. Make sure that they get lined up because you want it's a thread. <laughs> you don't want this part of the thread to be over here, in other words. You want it to look like it's lined up. So this is going under this one, right? Under, it's gonna go over this one. So we are going to go over. Right? This one went over. It's going this way. Make sure they're lined up. And it's going to go under that thread. Now, the only thing I'm going to tell you right now is whatever technique you use, stick with that technique. Because if you don't, then your lines are, not, are going to be kind of wonky. So I think what I'm going to do, I just showed you how to do that in sections, but I would rather just go through and do what I was doing. Um, I feel like that's faster, and I feel like I can get a better, better pattern out of it. These, these threads, they can be as thick or as thin as you'd like them to be, and it's totally up to you. Just try and keep them the same distance apart, and... Try and keep the flow the same way if you can. Um, oops, that's not going to work. That has to go up. Okay, so they're all kind of should be close to touching that line. And even at this stage, it's not necessarily, these aren't necessarily the, the final permanent lines. There's a lot of 
a lot more that's going to go on after we construct this knot. But we can do that all the way around. I may have to turn the page around so I can get it the way that I want it. time today. It'll look good when it's done now. So I was not sure where I'm going from this tutorial. Um, Not sure if I'm going to do the same thing with this one that I did with the other tutorials where I break it up into um, maybe different types. Maybe I'll put some breaks in here and experiment with that. I do want to do some corner knot tutorials. Um, I'll show you how to do some corner knots. If you have a preference, let me know in the comments. Um, just basically I've been trying to get through some Halloween decorations and some Halloween blogs, some fall blogs. I made a couple of new products for my shop, so I've been incredibly busy with that stuff. And then, of course, I was sick, so I was uh, I'm still trying to get over it. All right, one more loop. All right, I'm fairly happy with that. So that's the top loops. They're a little wonky over here, but I got better at it. <laughs> okay. And that's okay, we'll fix it as we go if we need to. Um, so now I guess the, the next step would be to do the bottom, right? So we're gonna work on the bottom. And we just now we need to think about overs and unders. So remember this went over a thread and under a thread. Now it's going to go over another thread. So this is just going to be an over. And it's going to connect up to this. So make sure that it connects. And make sure that you're Lines actually look good. Having a terrible drawing day today. We'll get there in the end, though. All right. Okay. And we're going to do that all the way around for the bottoms. This went under. Remember, we got to remember to match them up. Match it up with this one. It's going over this thread 
and under this one, okay? Let's bring this down. We're going, went under this one, now we're going over this one and under this one. And it's gonna match up with this. And again, your lines, your loops may not be quite right. Um, don't worry about it. Again, this is part of the process, just like you're drawing anything else. You're gonna be going back and fixing lines and doing shading and doing detail work and all of that will be fixed when you're done. All right, so we're gonna continue. We're gonna meet up with that one, meet up with that one. Okay. If I step away for a moment, um, just forgive me, I have a sniffly nose. All right, we're going to keep on going. Um, I'm loving that. Okay. And let me know in the comments what you think is easier. Whether you think it would have been easier to do the intersections first. Um, this was just my my personal opinion. And I wanted to show you something a little bit different too, because there are, like I said, there are other techniques to drawing knots. And unless you're doing digital work, you don't have to worry too much about it being uh, absolutely perfect. And in fact, part of the charm of these knots is that they're not perfect. And that's fine. That's totally fine. You see the artist's hand in it. You know, don't be afraid to bend those lines, too. Erase them, bend them, send it where you want it, where you think you want it. Is this pencil, you can erase it. It's okay. There's no mistakes. Anything you do can be erased. I know there are people out there who think, oh, you know, you should just, you should be able to just draw the line and not have to erase anything. You know what? They make erasers for a reason. Because artists need them. And sometimes you have a bad day, and today's a bad day for me, apparently. I'm not entirely happy with my lines today, but... That's okay. kind of bending that line because I feel like it's uh, not quite going where I want it to. Well, 
almost there, almost done, almost done, and you can actually see that it's, it's happening, it's happening. All right, and it looks like we got one more, one more. All right, Let's turn this back up this way. I mean, right, yes, we are. Okay. So, this is basically what we were aiming for. Um, I think today I'm just going to uh, leave it at that and show you. I'll do a little bit of shading and I'll go over a little bit of this, I think. Um, let me see. This is where I can get carried away. I'm going to go with my darkest one, 5B, and I'm just going to kind of do a small section of it. Do the bottoms. And you can see kind of what I mean when I say, you know, you, you fix the lines as you go. The further along in the drawing process you get, the more, the more you, you fix the lines to make them what you want them to look like. Everything else will be erased at some point. So I'm going to do a little bit of shading, but I'm going to use, mm, I'm using maybe... I mean HB for shading. Um, and the shading just gives it a little bit of depth. It's just like what we've done before. You're just putting a little bit of darkness on either side of the thread because when that thread is overlapping something else, it casts a shadow, right? That shadow, or the representation of that shadow, will give the eye, fool the eye into thinking there's depth there. And you can get really obnoxious with it and detailed and you, there's a lot of different shading techniques you can use. Uh, I'm going to go in with a, a blendy stump and just sort of pull some of this out. Maybe do a little shading this way. Now, again, when you do it, 
do your own uh, threads. You can make them really thin or you can make them really thick. It all depends on how, how you want it to look. Don't be afraid to experiment. It is only pencil you can erase. And the more you do this, the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And then you can even finish this off with, you know, textural details, like using different um, techniques for adding texture and shading. Um, you can, if you don't want it to be in pencil, you can go ahead and you can uh, start outlining it in ink. A lot of artists, 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 <laughs> can't speak. A lot of artists do, um, will ink these. They'll take these and they'll do a variety of thicknesses of black markers. So you'll need different size black markers. Or you can use different colors. Add color to it. I'm thinking about creating some designs and uh, maybe creating a, a coloring book. That might be fun. Kind of some thoughts in my head right now. But... That's about as much as I'm going to do with that because I don't want this video to be too long. But that's a basic way to create a, a Celtic knot. And you can add things to it on the inside, add things to it on the outside, add things to it behind the knot. You can even take, draw other knots in in between, like thinner, make thick lines, and then draw thinner lines in between, leaving in between. You can put animal faces in there, flowers. Um, you can paint this onto something. If you have a particular uh, a plate or a plaque or something, you can paint this on there. Um, it's just a matter of getting through learning how to construct them. And then being creative with, you know, practicing and then learning uh, to be creative and using them in different ways. So I usually use mine on some of my plates. And just bear with me a second. I have, I don't know if you have watched any of my other videos, but if you have not, um, usually these end up on a plate. This is a castle I'm working on that hopefully will get done sometime soon. Um, but I use the knots on plates like this. Um, different styles, things like that. So that's what I do with it. Or I paint them onto um, things that I make. Not so much the round ones. I usually use the square ones. Or the uh, straight straight knots on that stuff but anyway um, that's basically how you do a, a Celtic circle knot um, hopefully you understood most of that um, it, it can be hard to explain it sometimes <laughs> I hope I broke it down well enough for you to understand you know how, how to do it uh, what I did um, there are two other videos besides this one that you need to watch that hopefully you watched first because if you didn't then this might be a little more difficult for you but the first one is how to find the center point of a line or an arc without using a ruler um, that's very helpful because the first part of this uh, video tutorial was about how to uh, set up how to set up your grid okay so that is the first part if you didn't watch that you should go back and watch that and then rewatch this and it'll help you understand how I set it up and then you'll end up with something like that okay 
uh, how you stylize it. All these lines can, you know, will be erased. These are all guidelines. That's what I had said to you before. They're all guidelines. Draw them lightly so you can erase them. Um, yeah, you could trace this. If you didn't want it on grid paper, you can go ahead and you can trace it on tracing paper. Um, and then put it on onto a, another piece of paper. Or if you have a light table, you can light table it onto... Um, an unlined piece of paper that you can use for your artwork. Okay, so hopefully that was uh, something you enjoyed. If you liked my tutorial, um, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share. Um, if you have any comments, any suggestions, put them down in the comments for me and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Usually within a day or two I respond to comments. Okay, and then go back and read um, the blog if you need to. I have a blog that goes through this step by step. Um, that might be helpful to you as well. Okay, and all of that information I'll put down either in the description or in the comments. Okay, so have a great day and happy drawing, guys. Bye-bye.